Let's go, Tennessee fans. We got a lot of film to break down. Let's get into the spring game. Obviously, it was kind of a meh showing. Uh, it was kind of a drag, if you will. And ironically, on this first play, this is actually a positively graded play for me by this pass protection, okay? I look like it, but I'll tell you why in just a second. At the top of the screen, this is a twist stunt that is poorly picked up by the right tackle. If you look at this play all the way through, it was mostly the right tackle who screwed this up. He's got to come down and really take on this twisting DT so the guard can pick up this twisting defensive end. The right tackle is not able to do it. I don't know if that's going to be the starting right tackle, but feel free, Tennessee fans, to let me know. You got to play action fake, so this running back is stepping up here to help this guard with this A-gap twisting end. Tackle, as you can see, doesn't pick it up. And on top of that, even if Nico would have broken the pocket, there is a blitzing linebacker coming from this direction. The reason why this is a positive great at play for me though is the left side of this protection is actually really freaking the bottom line is this is actually what i wanted to see lance heard the five-star transfer i know lance and then uh james pierce a really good defensive end prospect who has a first round grade for next year's draft that is nasty stuff right there uh by both this left guard and lance just dominating these matchups that's good stuff you know this is what you really wanted to see in the spring game if you're five-star investment in left tackle is actually going to give you some protection so once you get the right tackle figured out you might actually have a good offensive line this year huh huh, huh? Uh, you won't have to pray that uh, right uh, darnell Wright uh, could magically come back and if this was picked up okay nico's probably throwing this in breaker right here is that completed i don't know but still all right here we go it's second in murfreesboro i mean you get the sack you're backed up and look at this box this is a light box. You got a three-man front, a standing in, a backer who's kind of outside the box. So this is a five-ish man box, six-man box, whatever you want to call it. And once again, you have another twist right here. Edge is coming around the edge right here. You should be able to block this and get a big, nice rushing gain. But they do a really good job of just stalemating everything. Everyone's holding up uh, at the point of attack. This is just really, really good defensive play with a light box. Sure, you'll take a couple of yards there, but it could have been a lot worse. Good pursuit uh, there from number 22. All right, so we get to third and 14. One thing I like that's kind of cut off is Nico actually told this running back to get right here when you get this double A-gap pressure look. Uh, obviously, we want to protect the A-gaps the best you possibly can. And what's funny is both the backers back up, all right? And this backer is like pointing at the center. I don't know if he's taunting him or not or make it a communication he's like hey the running back's going out but you can see across the way the protection here is actually really good it's just every db is playing back and the way i understand this these are just option routes if you can get vertical and behind them keep running but if they're bailing this far off of you just run a comeback and just take these yards all day every day and nico's waiting to decide what that receiver is going to do and receiver does come back i believe that is uh nimrod and this is actually ridiculous balance he was actually still up and obviously you're just not you know tearing guys to the ground in a spring game and you have to punt all right so we get to nico's second drive let's focus in on the starters let me first talk about this defensive alignment i really love putting at least one defender head up over the center if you believe they are going to pass because it just honestly if you can get a bull rush directly on the center you're always going to create some troubles for the quarterback and that's exactly what happens here okay we'll focus mostly on that and then we'll get to the left side where the sack eventually happens the right tackle holds down his assignment and it was kind of weird for this guard because this end was to the inside of the right tackle it was in a four eye technique so it was kind of a bizarre alignment to begin with uh but still i would have helped here and then immediately came over and helped here it's tough but there you go but the right tackle this time really good protection okay now let's take a look at the left side left side here is actually fine if you ask me once again lance heard going up against a guy who's going to play in the league 
this is a really good job here by Pierce because Lance is actually winning this rep at first. But once you get even, especially with a right-handed quarterback to his left side, you want to cut to the inside because this quarterback is likely stepping up and that's what Pierce does. That's why he's a really, really, really elite football player. And you see, he actually does a really noble thing right here and just kind of falls to the ground to make sure he doesn't run up on the legs. And he's like, hey, make sure you give me that sack. Actually, I don't even think that's Pierce. What I would also say uh, about this uh, that makes this Tennessee offense very interesting is the left side does not run routes, right? That's by design, you know, to, to give them rest. Uh, and then this play is just going to the right. If it doesn't work out, it's just dead. If you had decent protection, Nico is ripping this right here. It's not the uh, biggest window, but he's delivering that football. You could see that he wanted to, but he eats it and then just kind of runs into the sack. All right, here we go. Tennessee brings in their tight end. Actually, no, this is their tight end here at fullback, and uh, it's pretty clear that they're going to try and run this football. And, you know, they're getting exotic. They're pulling the left guard here, uh, H-back tight end, cuts like he's going this way and then goes straight vertically. And they're trying to run right through this left side, and it's honestly really good stuff by the defense just squeezing that hole tight enough there was a hole and he was able to squirt through but they squeezed it down enough and it sets up third down right, so we get to this third and seven and this is on nico okay this time you do have good protection all right once again you sell vertical and you run these comebacks right this is a big part of the tennessee offense if it's third and seven this ball needs to be out now Okay, you need to be anticipating and that Harold, the, the transfer coming in from uh, Tulane is going to be open and it's there. This ball should be out. He's got the arm to get it there. And you see there is just a little bit of a double pump right here. Okay, you see that it, it could have been delivered sooner. And because, you know, the ball was a little late. He had to run all the way back to it, and he's tackled short of the sticks. So, Tennessee fans, if you love these film studies, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, share this on all your Tennessee message boards. It goes a long way, okay? So, really good offense. Let's start with the protection, as always. You got a little tight end motioning in here to help with all the protection issues that Tennessee's had on first downs in this game. This is just really good stuff. Um, that guy is just good across the way. Some penetration up the middle here, but it's just good stuff. And honestly, this is really good offense. Vertical here to carry this corner. And then you just run, uh, just come back to this comeback route that's just wide open. Love seeing the receivers work back to the QB. And that's Brazil again, the two-lane transfer. So no Squirrel White in this game, no Brew McCoy in this game, no Thornton, I believe, in this game. So always good to, to have a, a number four option as good as him. All righty, so we get to this play. It's kind of cut off by uh, the camera angle here. And it's once again putting a nose tackle directly over the center just caused so many issues for this Tennessee offense in the spring game. Once again, Lance Hurd had a really, really good day, as did this left guard, but the center just could not block just anything up the middle. And it looks like this is a smaller backer player that lined up over him, uh, number 20 right here, and that's an easy sack, okay? Next thing that happens here, all right, is he running back? I believe this is Bishop. Do, do, do you all think Bishop is going to be the top backup? Obviously, Dylan seems it's going to be your guy next year. It's a right tackle getting beat again. He's not beat like just absolutely terribly here, but it looks really bad. So the running back decides to come help with this when he should have just picked this up, right? It should always be this, especially after a play action fake for the backer uh, for, to the running back. Protect your interior gaps first and then go find some other uh, trash to pick up but he leaves that 
And then what happens here is he crosses the face of Nico and cuts him off from even having a chance to step up and run in this direction. And we know Nico, when he's rolling out to the right side, he could be really, really, really good. Um, so just a disaster again in pass pro. All right, so we hit the second and 15. Love me some Josh Dobbs here. And I also love this play call, okay? One thing you can do as a play caller is if your protection is stinking, get very creative with your tight end. Because one thing that they had been doing, or you saw just a minute ago, motioning 87 back and forth and then have him come be a part of the protection. This time you motion him back and forth and he now is the primary receiver. Okay, you got a vertical route here that's being uh, that's taken up both this corner and the safety. So Nico starts off looking left and then takes advantage of this tight end matchup versus this backer one on one, and he just destroys them. Protection is really freaking good, and bang hits the tight end right in stride. The linebacker falls down. Never good when your defenders fall down. Now. You know, as a tight end, you'd like to make that guy miss and gain more yards, but still a good design right there. All right, third down. I almost called him Warren. Uh, it's Kitzelman. All right. So you you snap it quickly. Defense is not set up here for this third and eight. And this is obviously something that every quarterback should do. It's a good job by Bishop, the running back, just stopping his route. If you're this open, just get me the football now. And Nico throws a strike, and all you got to do is make this guy miss to the inside, and you should every time if you have that much space. And now you got to put on the burners, all right? And let's see how many yards he actually gains. I kind of forget here. Oh, man, should he have cut back right there? I don't know. That's – wow. That's Is that the big 320-pound guy that made this play? It was. That is really, really, really good hustle. Look at this. I mean, give – this guy uh, uh, a crap ton of credit okay and he was engaged by two blockers here that's really 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 good hustle for a spring game okay yes it's what you should do but look he even uh you, you could see 27 right here the first rounder pierce kind of loaf there at the end and it's the nose tackle actually making uh that play there you go big guy and once again this is so good by Tennessee. Take a look. Only eight seconds off the play clock. You get it snapped, and it looks like it's just a simple run. It's actually a double move from the slot, and the slot corner is just juked out of his shoes, and all Nico has to do is throw something good. You go quickly and helps out your pass protection and also makes coverage very simple, and you get easy pitch and catch touchdowns like that. I believe that is Nimrod right there scoring in the checkerboard end zone now it's the third quarter and we get this play uh, i i just love this design from tennessee show a lot of run action but just honestly throw it out to the outside get the football out to your playmakers and take these five yards i mean i i'm taking that all day every day obviously you want to see your receivers fall forward instead of backward uh, but still, we'll, 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 we'll take that all day. All right, it's second and six, and right here, Lance Hurd is the reason why this play uh, gets blown up. Uh, you know, when I watched him at LSU last year, where he had some issues were guys that were lined up to his inside shoulder, and this honestly is a really, really tough assignment here, and he just gives up too much interior pressure on a longer developing play, and everything else here is basically okay. Um, let's take a look at this right side before we get to the throw itself. But honestly, it's not the it's not the worst uh, from Lance, but it's not good enough either because you'll see when Nico lets this thing go, he gets crushed. All right, if you can't follow through, there's really no sense uh, in this ball being accurate. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of shocked he got that much on it while it was getting hit. Uh, uh, to Webb, and that's good coverage right there by 13 as well. So once again, I, I, I believe there were a lot of injuries on this Tennessee offensive line. Once again, Vol Nation, please correct me on that. Uh, this, to me, was probably Nico's worst rep. Once again, no Squirrel White, um, no Brew McCoy. So, you know, you're missing some of your guys. I I, I think Thornton played in this game. I, I'm not sure. 
Um, I, I'm just focusing in on the Nico reps. And if you guys want me to do uh, the Gaston Moore reps, I can do that too. The Merck Linger reps. But this just this should never be thrown in this spot. Um, the next thing I, I would say about this is the inbreaker probably should have been thrown here. Okay, it's difficult because you might think that this guy is running with the inner, um, and he's not. All right, so that's open and that's a big gain right there. It's enough for a first down. Then, you know, you even if these guys aren't actually running routes, which I don't really like on third down, uh, second down, first down, I, I could deal with this. I know it's by design; they're not just loafing for loafing's sake. But on third down, I, I want all my options to be open. The next thing, in an actual game setting, if it's third and five and they give you the middle of the field, you honestly just got to tuck and take this, right? That's there. You could even sit in this pocket, hit your swing route uh, for a pretty nice gain. This was the worst option of any of the options here. And, you know, it, it had too much deem on it anyway. So, just not good quarterbacking, but overall, it was a fine day for Nico, um, and I, I'm still very bullish on him going into the future. Now, like I said, if it's in your heart's desire, please drop a donation. These do take a very long time uh, to to cut up and all of that, but I'm telling you right now, I still think Nico and the Tennessee offense is going to be really good, and when their offensive line is fully healthy, I, I'll be able to fully evaluate them, um, but... Overall, I still think this team is going to be pretty good. It's just hard to really judge anything when Samson's not playing and, and all the key uh, skill guys aren't playing. I would say, though, uh, from uh, what I've seen highlight-wise, all right, this guy right here might not be wearing number 89 much longer. I miss it when wide receivers wore uh, the numbers in the 80s but that's mike matthews and apparently had a pretty big day so if you guys want me to break down his clips let me know uh but yeah protection issues need to get better i was impressed with some things defensively as well so comment down below tennessee fans i'll give nico a, a solid c plus to, to to b minus how about that and it's power hour sec boom and tonight we are doing barbecue chicken. Let's go.